In today's video, I'm going to tell you how you can roll your own VPN server on the cloud. I'm going to be using AWS for this example, but really the example should work on anything. So let's get started. Now, you might be asking yourself, why would I want to create my own VPN server? And well, that's a valid question. So first of all, whenever you use someone's VPN service, whether it's NordVPN, ExpressVPN, or many of the other big ones, you're trusting that company with your data. Now, granted, there are some trustworthy companies out there, but the entire premise of a VPN service seems to be built around some rather shady companies. If you roll your own VPN server, you are in control of the data gathered or just not gathered, and you can do with it what you want. Another advantage of rolling your own VPN server is that you can have total control over it. You can set up specific rules to route traffic to different destinations or to proxy it or filter it as, ever, as you see fit. Now, we won't be going into that much detail in this video, but rolling your own server goes a long way into allowing you to do that. Rolling your own server also allows you to support different protocols, which might not be offered by the traditional VPN providers. Depending on the server you choose to install, you can then install additional protocols to make your VPN even more functional. Another advantage of creating your own VPN server is that, depending on how much you normally pay for a VPN, it may work out to be cheaper and, for the first year, free. If you have a brand new AWS account, uh, you can create a VPN on a T2.micro server, which for the first year costs absolutely nothing. Uh, after a year, the free trial ends. However, it's still very, very cheap, working out to about two or three dollars a month. Uh, that's less than I pay for ExpressVPN. So, Regardless of what reason you have for rolling your own VPN server, I'm going to be showing you one of the easiest ways to do so. We're going to be using an OpenVPN pre-configured image on AWS, enter a few settings, download a client, and we're off to the races. So as usual with AWS, we start in the console. The first thing you'll want to do is make sure you've chosen the right region, since the VPN will make you seem like you are from whichever region you choose for your instance. Now from services, we'll go to EC2 and uh, we'll click launch instance here and then click launch instance again. Now what you want to do is switch to the AWS marketplace and you'll search for the open VPN instance. So this is really handy because it has it automatically installed. And you'll want to make sure you use open VPN access server. Uh, the one without any connected devices in brackets, okay? Because these cost money. As you can see, this one costs 700 a year. Okay, we're going for the free tier at this point. So we'll just select the first one. So uh, here you can see the pricing, and you can see that for our AMI, uh, regardless of which instance type we use, the software is free. Now, the reason for this is that OpenVPN, at least this version, uh, allows us uh, two simultaneous connections at no cost, okay? So you and the buddy can use this VPN simultaneously at no software cost. And then for more users, you'd need to buy a license. As for the machine type, I'm using T3.micro, which as you can see is eligible for the free tier. Uh, now, at this point, you could actually click Review and Launch, but in my case, I'm just going to go through it quickly. You'll see that it only creates an 8 gig disk, which is more than enough. Uh, and I'm going to add a tag here. So I'm going to set the tag name to name and the value to TechGuru VPN. And uh, yeah, of course, the security group will be pre-configured with the ports, which OpenVPN and its administration interface need. And I'll click Review and Launch. And finally, I'll click launch to confirm my server. Now from here, you'll need to choose a key pair you already have, or like me, create a new key pair and make sure you download it. And now we can launch our instance. Okay, so our instance has launched. Uh, let's go ahead and view it. There it is. 
So we now need to connect to our instance. And when you click connect, uh, you are shown some steps to get connected to the instance. Now on Mac or Linux, you'll do this on a terminal and on Windows, you can do this from the command prompt. So I'm gonna change the permissions of the certificate as indicated. Uh, and now I'll just copy the connection command uh, from the connect page to my uh, terminal. Okay, so I'll confirm that I want to connect. And uh, the initial OpenVPN configuration comes up, including an end user license agreement. So make sure you read that. <coughs> and then you're asked a number of questions. Now, you can actually answer yes to all of these. So just keep pressing enter until you're asked no more questions. Okay, so at this point, the configuration is being created uh, and the server is being launched. And now we're told that we need to log out of the root user account and log in instead as OpenVPN AS and our connection is terminated. Uh, so what we need to do is go back to the previous command we typed and simply replace root here with OpenVPN AS to connect with that user account. And once we're reconnected, all we need to do is set a password for the OpenVPN user. So this will be what we use to log in to the web-based interface. Okay, so set something secure, of course. And once we've done this, we're actually done with the command line. So we can exit to disconnect and exit to close the command line. Okay, so now back in the instance details page on AWS, I am going to copy the IP address of the machine. And then in a new browser tab, I'll type HTTPS colon slash slash DIP colon 943 slash admin. And I will get a warning that the connection is not private since this is a self-signed certificate. Uh, you can safely ignore the warning as required. And later in admin, you can actually install a certificate if you want. So now we need to log in. The username is OpenVPN. And the password is whatever you've just set via the command line. Another end user license agreement, which you have to carefully read. <coughs> and uh, there we go. It says two VPN connections allowed, which is plenty enough for us. So the one thing you'll need to do here is go to VPN settings and then scroll down to find should client internet traffic be routed through the VPN. Okay, and set it to yes. To be honest, this question was asked during the configuration, but uh, we just used everything as default. Then make sure to scroll down and click save settings and click update running server to apply the changes. And uh, yeah, <laughs> believe it or not, that's it. Our open VPN server is now configured. Now, of course, we need a client to actually connect to the server from our machine. So just go back to the IP address and port of the system without any additional path. Once again, log in with the username OpenVPN and whatever password you set earlier. And here you can see we can download clients for Mac, Windows, Linux, Android and iOS. So pretty much any platform you want is covered. In my case, of course, I'm going to download the Mac client. And the nice thing about this client is that it is pre-configured to connect to this particular server. So there's no need to enter any IP addresses, ports, etc. Installing the client is very easy. It's a next, next, finish kind of installation. And I should now have an open VPN app. Here it is. Uh, now, when initially launched, the client displays a tour. Uh, there's really not much to see here. You can go ahead and close it. It again makes you read a license agreement. And here we are. So, yeah, it's uh, simply a matter of clicking that button now. Now, if I go to whatismyip.com, you can see my IP address uh, and the fact that I am detected as being in Malta with Melita Limited as my ISP. 
So now I'll connect to the VPN and you will need to log in once again here with OpenVPN as your username and the password you set earlier in the shell. Okay, so I'm now connected and statistics are displayed. And so now refreshing what is my IP.com, I should get a different IP address. And in fact, I do. Okay, so you can see my IP address has changed. I'm detecting as being in Madrid, although that's incorrect. I'm actually in Milan. And my ISP is Amazon Technologies Incorporated. So I am now running an encrypted connection that also spoofs my location. Now, from the settings of the application, you can see there are quite a few things you can do. I like to enable dark mode, of course. And let's actually carry out a speed test here. Uh, so whilst performing this test, I was connected to a 100 megabit internet connection. So let's see what kind of speed we get from this VPN. And huh, OK, that's pretty respectable. OK, so I'm getting somewhere around 88 to 90 megabits per second, uh, which considering I only have a 100 megabit connection at this point, and there are other users on the network is actually extremely good. Uh, and I'm getting 13 megabits upload. I have 15 megabits upload um, right now. So yeah, yeah, this is really, really good speed. And you can see there the results of the speed test. From the administration console, uh, if you go to user permissions, you can add another user. So you can share this VPN with your partner or friend. Uh, and obviously you can configure their access and their settings here. Another thing you might want to do from the AWS console is get an elastic IP from the EC2 dashboard. So this allows your machine to have a static IP address. So you simply click allocate to get an IP address, as you can see, and then actions associate and make sure you choose the TechGuru VPN or whatever you've called it instance, which would give your instance a static IP address. So in this case, I'm going to disconnect from the VPN there we go. And so now refreshing the page should display my IP again. And yeah, there you go. Back to Malta. As you can see, setting up your own VPN server is not difficult. Now, one thing that I tell anyone who's doing anything on AWS is monitor the cost. Make sure you set up a price alert so you're kind of, you know, a bit more in mind what, what kind of data you're using. Because remember, the bill you get is mostly for the data transfer that you're doing. Uh, the, the microserver itself costs very little. So make sure you monitor your bills to make sure you don't get any, get any unexpected surprises. I hope you found the video useful and if you encounter any problems or you have some novel use for a VPN, be sure to comment down below. Whilst there, please hit like and subscribe. It really helps to keep these videos coming as it motivates me that, you know, someone is actually looking and watching and viewing these videos. So anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. And until the next video, thanks for watching.